Okay, welcome everyone. I well, hope everyone had a nice happy holidays and, uh, you know, is starting off 2021 with the best year they possibly can. Um, so this week we are going to do, Wolf Corp is going to start off with their basic programming workshop and I will uh, let them take over the meeting. Welcome. Welcome everyone to Wolf Corp's programming workshop. Today's lesson will be focused on getting you the basics of being able to write your own programs. First of all, who are we? We are WolfCorp, a fourth year FTC team and have participated in the first competition for 12 years. We have consistently placed highly in both FLL and FTC competitions throughout our years and have earned an, invent and earned an invitation to Worlds last year. Today, we have our lead programmer, Joshua, presenting on how to start programming in Java. All right, so starting us, off, uh, starting us off, we have the tools we need to actually start programming the robot. So first of all, uh, the platform we'll be using is Android Studio. So Android Studio is an IDE, also known as an integrated development environment for uh, Google's Android operating system. So that is what you're going to be programming on. Uh, the language we'll be using is Java, and Java is developed by Oracle, and it's marketed as a class-based object-oriented programming language. So you should uh, make sure ensure that you have Java installed on your computer. And lastly, we have uh, we need a First Tech Challenges uh, SDK or Software Development Kit. So this one holds all the software tools and programs needed to create applications for uh, to program the robot. So we have the link down there. And um, once you actually import it into Android Studio, and if you have any troubles, you can feel free to reach out to us or ask around to your teams. But once you have imported, you should see a screen that looks like this. On the left here, uh, you have two main folders that we want to focus on, the FTC robot controller folder and the team code folder. And um, if you want to get started, a lot there's a lot of good samples in here. It's under the FTC robot controller, then Java, org first inspires FTC robot controller and external samples. And down here, uh, there will be the sample classes you want. And once you're actually going to program a robot, you want to put all your classes inside of this folder down here under team code, Java, org first inspires the FTC team code. And uh, here we have a sample program already in there, lesson program. Uh, here we have the template file. So, um, if you're following along on Zoom, we'll be putting the link inside of the chat. And once you do have it, you want to download it and put it inside the team code folder like this, uh, like you see down here. And I'll give anyone here uh, about a minute to get that set up. So it should look like uh, this bottom picture here. We have that lesson program file under the team codes folder. All right, uh, we're gonna move on now. And if you want to, uh, if you want, you can pause the video if you hadn't gotten that yet. And then if you do have it set up, you can continue to play the video. Uh, so on our, uh, this is the driver station's phone. Um, oh wait, shoot. We're gonna switch tab over to Android Studio. So here we have the, the class already inside. And once you open it up, you'll see, uh, sort of a bunch of code that looks like this. And this is sort of like a very basic. Um, Wait, Josh, I think you need to share your Android oh, Studio. I'm not sharing the screen. Ah, hang on, my bad. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen now. All right, so this is the code that you'll see once you uh, load up the class. And it's like a very basic template. And this style is the, um, the linear style. So there's two different styles you can program in. There's the iterative and linear. This is the linear one, and the linear one is easier to understand. So uh, you break it, basically break it down into three different sections. This part right after run op mode um, will happen. Well, anything that's in here right after run op mode and before wait for start, this entire part will run once you hit the init button. So once you press the init button, it will start executing anything that's within this area. So start with the first one, going down the second one and so forth, all the way down until it hits wait for start. Then it'll pause the program 
And then it'll wait for whoever's manning the driver station and wait for them to hit the play button. Once they do hit the play button, uh, it'll continue down and run anything that's down here. Anything here will run one time and then not run anymore. And anything down here will run repeatedly. So usually this part will be for putting uh, your autonomous code. And when you make a teleop code, you'll usually put stuff in here since you want to continuously check for inputs from the controller. Now going back up to the name, uh, this part is basically uh, describing your program. It will show up on the driver station phone. And so the name will be whatever shows up on the driver station phone. So if you uh, name it, say, lesson program, then on your driver station phone, when you choose your program, it will come up as lesson program. So you put a name there that will describe your program so that when you actually compete, the person who is uh, manning the driver station phone can easily find the program they need and make sure it's descriptive yet short. So they know what it does and they don't have to like start reading a whole bunch of text to figure it out. The group here, it allows the app to sort of organize them. So if you, if they kind of come out in chunks, they have a, they're separated by a little bar. And yeah, so if you put them as the same group, they'll be easier to locate since they'll be next to each other. And on the left here, we have autonomous. So it's either autonomous there or you could put teleop there. And that's used to basically um, classify your program as either an autonomous program or a teleop program. And um, if you remember here, you have, if you click on the left arrow, it will show you all the autonomous programs. If you click on the right arrow, it shows all the teleop program. So depending on what you put here, uh, whether autonomous or teleop, it will show up either on the left arrow or the right arrow. And you want to keep it organized so all your autonomous ones should be named autonomous and our teleop one should have the teleop there. And after that, there's disabled. So if you look at the example classes, you'll notice that. Uh, if you look at the example classes, you'll notice that uh, they always have at disabled, and that's why you don't actually see it on the driver station phone when you're run, uh, when you're choosing a program. And so, um, you make sure you either want to comment it out or delete it before you start, or else it will never show up on your driver station phone. Yeah, let's get started. So first of all, we want to program is uh, we want to this this one we're going to first program the autonomous part of the robot, so make it move autonomously. And we're going to be programming how to make it move forward, backwards, and turning. And ultimately, we're going to uh, make it drive in a square pattern. So first of all, you have your robot. And you want to actually make it so that you can. So what you're trying to do now is you want to um, set the motors on your robot, give it a certain amount of power so it actually spins. But for you to actually do that, the program needs to know which motor you're referring to when you're running it on the code. So you want the, you need to specify which motor is equates to which variable so you can set power to the certain motor that you want. So how we do that is we first create uh, variables down here. So right before wait for start, so that's after you hit initializing, but before you hit the play button, you want to create two, two variables, two DC motor variables that will store um, your left motor and right motor. And we're assuming that this is going to be a very basic push bot. So there's going to be two motors on a robot, a left one and a right one controlling the left wheels and the right wheels. So we'll create two variables. So on the left here, this is the type of the variable. So what type of variable it is. And on the right here, that's the name of the variable. So in your program, we're going to be referring to this DC motor with the, uh, with the name left. Now, afterwards, we need to actually uh, specify which motor the left DC motor is. So we do type in this part. So what this is, is it looks on the hardware and it finds a DC motor with a name and then the name goes here. And if you don't remember what you named your DC motors, if you go on the driver station, you can hit the three dots on the top right on the driver station or the robot controller. And there should be a configure robot um, sort of button around here. And after that, if you go to your um, go into your expansion hub and then all the way down into the motor category, uh, whatever you put here is whatever name it's going to be looking for. So since uh, in this example, uh, the motor that's plugged into port zero is named motor test. 
And so over here, we will write motor test. And uh, same goes for the right wheel. And we're assuming that you're probably not going to be naming the motor test. You have to also name it in a way that makes it easier to identify. So uh, we're going to be calling left motor. So uh, you want to type left motor in here as a name so that it knows which motor you're referring to. And we can copy and paste this part and switch it to the right motor. And same format here. Now it'll be looking for a motor that with a name right motor somewhere on a different port, I'm assuming, and assigning it to the variable right. And now we have two variables within the program. And now the, um, the program knows which motor you're referring to when you call on each of the variables. And one more thing to take note of, since the, when you have two motors facing the opposite direction, when you spin both of them clockwise, they won't be necessarily spinning the same direction in term, uh, when you're relative to the robot. So if they both go clockwise, your robot will start turning instead of going forward since they have to be spinning in opposite directions for it to actually move forward. Since if you imagine in your head, if the left wheel goes, turns in a clockwise rotation and the right wheel goes in a counterclockwise rotation, then it'll go backwards, straight backwards. And if uh, if you do it the other way around, it goes forward. But if you have them both spinning clockwise, the robot will instead um, turn left or right, depending on how your um, motors are placed. And therefore, we have to reverse one of the motors just so that um, when you set them both to the same power, one will spin clockwise, the other one will spin counterclockwise, and that will cause the robot to go forward or backwards. And to do that, you just do uh, one of the motors. So we're choosing the right motor for now, and we'll be setting the direction and set it to DC motor dot direction up. Dot reverse. And that will ensure that when you set um, the power to one of the wheel or one of the motors and set the same power to the other motor, uh, they'll run in the opposite directions, which will cause the robot to go forward and backwards. So that's all the setup we need to program two of the two of the motors on the robot. And now we move down here to underneath wait for start. So now this part will run after you hit the play button. And so this is where the autonomous uh, portion of the code will actually come into play. And down here, you uh, to actually make the motor spin, you will set power to it. This is a very simple fashion to get the robot, uh, the, the motor to spin. So if we set power to 0 0.5, that will cause it to run at a half speed. So maximum power is one, and you can go from negative one to positive one. And negative one will mean it's spinning the other way around, and zero will be stop. So if we set both of them to a power of 0 0.5, it will cause both of the motors to spin and ultimately cause the robot to drive forward. And we can also add a sleep function. So sleep function pauses the code, and it's calculated in milliseconds. So 3,000 milliseconds, about three seconds, which means after it sets power, it'll wait three seconds before it executes whatever's after it. And just to um, clarify, when you set power, it basically sets the speed of the motor. It doesn't stop it. So you have to actually stop the motors after uh, at the end of the program. So to stop it, we just set power to zero. And that will ensure that the motors actually stop moving. And if you uh, put down to your robot and you actually run it, uh, we have a video of what it will look like. So as you can see, the robot will travel forward about three seconds and then stop. So this is what the program does. And if you want to move backwards, you just simply switch the power around to negative 0.5. So setting negative power it doesn't break the robot. It just makes the robot uh, make the motor spin in the opposite direction. And what that will look like is, oh wait, we don't have that. Never mind. Uh, so this is the backwards. So if you have negative power, uh, the robot will travel backwards. And next up, we have we make the robot turn. So there are multiple ways to turn. You can have a turn in place. So if you 
set one to negative and the other one to positive, that means one of the motors will go backwards, one of the wheels will go backwards, the other wheel will go forward. And if you can imagine that in your head, the robot will sort of do a turn and it will remain relative in the same position and do like a quick turn. So here we have a video of turning in place. So the left wheel is set with a negative power, so it moves backwards. The right wheel is set with a positive power, so it moves forward, and that causes the robot to turn. And you can also, if you want, you can set one of the powers to zero, and this will cause a slow turn. So if the left wheels are stationary and the right wheels are moving, then the robot will slowly turn left. Now, this is a different sort of turn. Uh, for this one, the motors are actually set to a slightly higher value. So if one is going slower than the other, because one of the wheels is traveling a longer distance, it will also cause the robot to turn. And now, if we want to actually make it go in a square, what we can do is um, have it first travel in a straight line, wait, and then stop. And then we want it to turn. So if you recall, turning is Turning will look like this, where you have one of the motors run backwards and another motor run forward, and then stopping after three seconds. And since we want to run in a square, you will realize that if the robot just goes forward and turns left, it will just go forward, left, forward, left, forward, left. There's a pattern to it. And if you already have some Java experience, you can probably assume that we can use a for loop to make the program easier. So instead of um, for each leg of the square, we copy this entire code four times. We can just make a for loop that will iterate through the program four times. And that way it will reduce the amount of code needed and makes it look a lot neater. So to write that, we can uh, set up a for loop. My bad. And so this is a for loop. And what it'll do is it'll run through this entire section uh, four times. So it'll iterate through four times. And that will cause it to go in a square fashion, as you can see in this video. So this is the first part of for loop. This is the second iteration of for loop. This is the third iteration and the fourth iteration. And that will cause a robot to go in a square. And you might need to adjust the values a bit since this is based on time. So if your robot turns faster, the motor spins faster, you will need a different set amount of time to actually make it go in a square fashion. So you can experiment it by yourself and try to make your robot drive in a square. And now I hand it over to Daniel, who will introduce the teleop portion of the robot. All right, okay, so we'll be talking about the teleop portion of the robot, uh, where after the 30 second autonomous, you'll be using, or you'll be having a driver or maybe two drivers using controllers to control the robot to complete objectives. So here we have our uh, sample program again. It's the same program that Josh, or that was linked in the chat and that Josh used. And we'll be kind of modifying it slightly to make it into a teleop instead of autonomous. So kind of the first kind of things we want to actually do are here is the import statement. And basically import is kind of, it lets you use this autonomous uh, kind of function or that kind of class that is uh, provided by FTC in their, their SDK. And we actually won't be using autonomous so we can actually remove this. And you might notice that a red line comes up and uh, Android Studio tells you that there's an error, and that's because you're trying to be using you're trying to use the, the at autonomous when using a teleop. So we can switch the autonomous to teleop, and it's already actually been oops teleop, and then it's already been imported here, so we're good. But if you didn't have it imported, uh, you'd want to import it. And you can also notice that the at disabled is also commented out. Uh, it's really up to you if you want to remove the import or not. Uh, sometimes you might want to just disable it and um you can remove the line and if you for example wanted to add it back uh it gives you red line but 
kind of Android Studio does this neat thing where it kind of realizes that you want to add this so then it would import the class for you automatically. So for now, we're not going to be using the disabled uh, because we want obviously the program to show up on the phone so we can remove the import and the disabled. All right. And we also have, so we have kind of the same structure with the lesson program and it's a linear op mode. And what we can do is uh, here's the run op mode and we can kind of start setting up what we want to do. And the first part is actually adding the motors. And regardless of if you're doing autonomous or a teleop, you would always need to be able to set powers to the motors to actually make your robot move. So we could do that here. We could do that in the run op mode, or we could do it uh, before the run op mode. Uh, it's really up to you. I guess it, there's teams that do it either way, but that's kind of a decision, decision you can make. And so uh, what we want to do actually is we want to declare our variables. So we have a DC motor and then we'd have the left and the right. And, oops, and we can set them equal to hardware map dot get. Oh, and we actually want to keep this. We want to put a uh, probably private, so private DC motor. So uh, we can only access it in this class. You might want to not want to be accessing it other classes, especially if this is a teleop program. And whatever you named on the robot configuration, you can put in the dot get. And I think that should be good. Oops, all right. Alright. All right. And uh, you see that there's actually error and that's because, oh, sorry, I mistyped it. All right. And now we're gonna wanna copy that and do the same thing for the right motor. And something you might actually have noticed during our example videos were that the robot actually had four wheels and the wheels might have looked kind of funny to you, but those that was because we uh, actually had a four wheel drive set up with mechanism wheels. And that means you basically have four motors set up instead of two. But uh, for this, like for the purpose of this lesson, both ways work and basically you could use any of them. All right, so now we have our two motors set up. Uh, we want to actually start telling them to do stuff and uh, based on certain conditions, you want them to do things. And those certain conditions would usually be when you're on, when, you're, when your driver is using that controller and trying to move the robot around. And so here's a picture of a controller that uh, some teams might use. And it's, I think it's, you can buy it online as well. It's pretty cheap. I think it might be in the 20 range, $20 range. And uh, and it's a Logitech, you might have seen this from, it's like an actual game controller. So you might have seen it from playing games like on Xbox or a PS4 or PS3 or something like that. But um, yeah, so there's kind of a variety of different buttons that you see here. Uh, so I guess we'll start from the right side and go to the left. So first you have these kind of these X, Y, A, B buttons. And these buttons, basically when you press them, you can kind of get the input and see if they're being pressed. And so if they're being pressed, they would, uh, they would return a value of true. And if they're not being pressed, it would return a value of false. And what I mean by returning true or false is when you, uh, let's say you set up an if statement and you could do if, and then you could take something like your B button and we do gamepad one. And you might actually notice when you type gamepad, it suggests that you suggest two. And that's because uh, you can have two drivers, but and gamepad one, gamepad two really just depends on when you connect the controller to your phone. And if you do uh, start A, if you press start A, then you get gamepad one. And if you do start B, then you get gamepad two. All right, but if you do gamepad one and then uh, we can do something like dot B, uh, gamepad one dot B would check if gamepad one dot B is being pressed. And, uh, and if it's not being pressed, it would return false. And if it's being pressed, it would return true. And this is generally true for all four of these buttons, for these three buttons actually, as well as these D-pad buttons here. So up, down, left, right. Uh, as well as there's two but bumper buttons here. And so uh, those are kind of, if they're being pressed, it's true. If they're, being, uh, they're not being pressed, it's false. Okay. And other than the true false kind of is either on and off situation, there's also these joysticks here. And 
although this image doesn't show it well, these kind of, these, like this slight indent above the regular bumper, those actually are also bottom, but are buttons at the very, like near the bottom of your controller that uh, are similar to these joysticks in that instead of being just on or off, they actually have a range. So if you press them all the way down, then you get a, like a one, or for these, if you push them all the way down, they'd be one. And for just, and, and they kind of give you like a range. So you can imagine if you wanted to create a drivetrain and you wanted it to go half speed when you're kind of pushing it halfway and go full speed when you're pushing it completely, then that's kind of the uh, ability to be able to make from these joysticks and those bottom bumpers. And so uh, for those bumpers, it's really, you only go from zero to one, you're either pressing them all the way down, you're not pressing them all the way down, or you're pressing them somewhere in the middle. But for the joysticks, they actually can move in two directions. So you can move up, down, left, right. And so you kind of have a two-dimensional di two um, input. And so you have two of those. And actually, surprisingly, these both actually, if you press down on them, there's like a kind of a click. And that click, me or and you can hear a click. And that's actually also a button press where it's similar to these Y, X, A, B. Um, but yeah, if, if you had the controller actually in your hand, you kind of be able to tell when you press all the way down and you can kind of hear a click. And that's the registering of a you know, true false button click. Okay, so that's kind of a quick rundown of the controller, but now we'll go back to our program. And so for programming and teleop, we'll just, for this, for the sake of, this lesson program, we'll just be making it move forward and backward, and we'll be showing two ways to do it. So the first way we can do it is um, we can let's make uh, B and or let's yeah okay so let's use B and X and B and X will basically uh, if you press B so if you have two motors if you press B the right motor will go forward and if you press X the left motor will go forward and uh, or actually wait sorry uh, actually that would be a bit because then you can go backward. Um, so let's, okay, we'll make it a little simpler. Uh, so B, pressing B will just make the robot go, or actually let's make Y and A because it's a bit more intuitive. So pressing Y will make the robot go forward and pressing A will make the robot go backward. And so how we can do that is we can do if instead of gamepad1.b, we want to use Y. So if gamepad1.y, then we could set both the left and the right motor powers to go be positive and go forward. So we do left up set power. And then we're gonna set them both to 0 0.5. And uh, if gamepad 1.a is pressed, uh, left dot set power negative 0 0.5. And then left, and then, oh, right set power. This should not be left, this should be right. Okay, and uh, at first this code looks fine, right? You're setting Y to go forward and your A to go backwards, but there's kind of a problem that arises. And Josh kind of mentioned this before, when you set the power to 0 0.5, if you don't tell it to set back to zero, it'll always be running at 0 0.5. So you can kind of imagine there'll be a problem when you press Y and then you want to stop, right? If you want to stop, you can't press A because that's going to start sending you backwards. And if you just don't touch anything, it'll stay at 0 0.5. So instead what we can kind of do is we can kind of merge these two into the, the same if statement block. And then we make the second condition an else if. And this is particularly helpful because if they're pressing both buttons at the same time for some reason, uh, it will actually, this code will run. It'll recognize that you're pressing Y I'll sell the powers to go forward and I'll just ignore that you're pressing A. And if you had it before like this, it would actually just kind of start, the robot would basically start uh, spazzing out and it would kind of just go forward, backward, forward, backward. And you could actually burn out your motors or uh, damage your motors by doing things like that for extended periods of time. So we can keep it at an else if so that that doesn't happen. And then we can also add an else statement and by the way, I think we'll be linking a, a YouTube playlist if you aren't too familiar with Java. And then if you're not able to, or if you're not that familiar with Java, you could probably just, this video will be, or this record, this is being recorded. So you guys can probably just like kind of learn a bit of Java and then come back to this to get a better understanding of it. 
but for now we'll just keep on going and so if you're not pressing a y or not pressing a then we don't want to set any power so we do left dot set power and we can set it back to zero and then we can do right dot set power and then we can also set it back to zero and so that's pretty simple but uh you kind of notice that you're not able to do any turning because you're moving both forward or backward uh and there's no really buttons to go left or right and so we that's where the kind of the joysticks can come in and a lot of teams uh, like to use the joysticks for movement for this very reason. And so you can start actually using them to do all sorts or ranges of mo motion. So instead of doing these buttons, we can, we can actually comment this out if you guys wanna use it in the future or something. And how you can comment on Android Studio is you do control shift and your slash button, which is next to the right shift. It'll comment it all out for you and it's pretty neat. Well, pretty neat tool for Android Studio. And instead we can use these joysticks. And so there's a variety of different ways that teams use the joysticks to control their robot. Uh, for example, there's uh, like a mechanism drive where you basically have this joystick here. If you push this joystick, or you can really pick any one, but sometimes, or uh, some teams prefer to use the right one or the left one, but it doesn't really matter. It's really just preference, but they use this joystick. When they push it forward, the robot moves forward. So when they push it backward, it moves backward. And then when you uh, push it left, uh, you either can be turning left, or if you have a four wheel mechanism drive, you can be actually sidestepping left. And if you guys aren't too familiar with mechanism wheels, it's basically an idea that the wheels are tilted. And uh, if they're tilted at 45 degree angles. And basically if you set the wheels in a certain way, uh, you'll be able to move in the sidestep as well as move forward backward. And so uh, you can use this in the forward backward. If you have a mechanism, you go left, right for the sidestep. And then this joystick can be, this left, right could be used for a turn. But uh, for now we will not uh, touch with mechanism drive and still will instead uh, prefer a uh, tank drive where instead for our case, we have two motors, a right motor and a left motor. And this uh, joystick will, when you push it up, it'll push the right motor forward. And when you push it back, it'll push the right wheel back or make it rotate backwards. And then the same idea for the left where the left wheel goes forward backwards. And uh, basically then you'll be able to, if you push both of them forward, then the robot will go forward. If you push both of them back, it'll go backwards. If you only push the right one, then it'll only turn the right wheel. And so you'll turn, or it'll only move the right wheel. So you actually turn to the left. And if you only push the left wheel, then it'll turn to the right. And if you push, uh, like, and if you do like one where it's pushing forward and one's pushing backwards, the robot will like rotate in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement that. And so what we want to do is uh, we want to take whatever, uh, gamepad one, the, the value of how much you're pushing, and we'll set that to the power. So if we do something like if, and then if this gamepad, so gamepad one dot, and then what it's called is actually the right stick, and then Y, this is Y is the vertical movement. And sometimes you actually just like push it a little bit, or you're not pushing it, but still thinks it's getting pushed. So uh, what we can do is we can make sure if this right stick dot y usually you you see a not zero right so if it's not being pushed then you do something but this actually might fail sometimes because there might be just like slight error on the actual joystick so instead we can do something where if the right stick y is greater than 0 0.05 or it's less than negative 0 0.05 so that even if there's like maybe a little slight error, it'll, it won't get picked up and uh, your motors uh, basically won't move. Like, because if you're setting your, well, as you'll see, if you're setting the power, it's actually gonna be not enough to actually turn the motor and it's kind of gonna stall out your motor. Okay, but uh, this is basically making sure that, so yeah, so basically now we know that the right stick is getting pushed. And one of the kind of finicky, uh, weird things about this controller is that when you're pushing up, you would think, or that, or actually, let me backtrack a bit. With this Y value, 
it ranges from one to negative one. So if you push it all the way up, you would think it'd go to one. And if you push it all the way down, you'd think it'd go back to negative one. But actually when you push it up, it goes to negative one. And then when you push it down, it goes to one. So uh, to make it more intuitive, right? When you wanna push up, do you wanna make it go forward? So what we'd actually do is when, uh, when you set the power here, so when you do, or actually since this is the right stick, it's only controlling the right motor, we do right dot set power. And since we want it so that if you push it halfway, you go half speed, what you can do is you could actually get the value of this gamepad one dot right stick Y. And so gamepad, and so you'd be setting the power to how much you push it. And this is pretty neat because the right to the motor value that you can take for setting power is from one to negative one. And the gamepad stick or the gamepad, the right stick also is one to negative one. But something we would have to do to make the controls a bit more intuitive is actually multiply this by negative one or make it basically a negative of itself. So that when you're pushing up, you'll be setting the power to positive and you'll be pushing the motor actually forwards. And so now with this right stick, it should be able to move forward. Your right wheel shouldn't be able to move forward and backward. And we want to do the same thing, but just on the left side. So we can copy the code. And then if gamepad right, gamepad one dot left stick y is greater than 0 0.5, or the left stick is less than negative 0 0.5, then when we would do left dot set power um, the left stick. All right. And so now that's basically, um, and oh, we don't want to forget the else statement. So else, if you're not really touching it, we want to set the power back to zero. So we do right stick set, or just right dot set power to zero. And then we could also do the same idea over here. Instead of right, we'll do left. Okay. And that should be about it for the mechanism drive. So you could actually run a dual setup. So even though I commented this code out, you could actually re uncomment the code. And so now you could be using both of them, but I uh, usually you would wanna kind of like make your button usage efficient, especially with COVID this year. Uh, with not many people gathering, you might be only be able to have one driver at a time. And so you maybe you only want to be using one controller instead of two, or only one person. Or, yeah, your one driver would mean one controller unless you'd be like some crazy guy using two controllers at the same time, like maybe one with one hand. But um, yeah, so you could be, you could use definitely two functions. So this would be moving it forward, backward, the button press. And this would be moving it forward, backward, actually implementing a tank drive and making it turn as well. And so I think we have some examples here to show you. Let me back it up. And all right, let's see if we can play this video. All right, so uh, you can see here that both uh, wheel or both uh, joysticks were put forward, so then the robot went forward, and then both were pushed backwards, and then went backward, and then pushing the right motor would turn the right wheel, and then, or move the right motor, or move the right wheel, and um, yeah. And so yeah, that's uh, basically it for the teleop. Uh, this is obviously kind of a much simpler uh, teleop, and for with this kind of robot where it's really just four wheels, or in your case, it might be only two wheels. Uh, two wheels and motors, you'd obviously have to add a lot more over, more to it to make it actually uh, do more objectives, but this is kind of just a basic introduction. All right. Hey, um, Danny, can you go back to the, go back to the code real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you were following along, you actually tried to copy this down, you will realize that your robot might not actually act the way you think. And this is a pop quiz now. There is actually something wrong with this code. And if you remember, which where do you put the, so we want this part to continuously check whether your gamepad is being moved. That way, it, like it'll keep running, it'll keep checking whether a gamepad is, or I mean, your joystick is pushed up or not to set the actual power. And if you recall back in the, when we were talking about, uh, talking about the different parts of the template program, where do you put stuff where you want to continuously run it while the play button or while the, uh, while the program is running? I'll give you about uh, three seconds to think about it. And I, now, if you said that um, it should be under the while loop at the very bottom, 
where it says while alt mode is active, then you'd be correct. So while alt mode is active, it'll keep running whatever is inside the while loop as long as the program is running. And that way it'll continuously check through all the if statements and make sure that your joystick are being pressed up and they don't set the power or if your button's being pressed, it'll set the actual power. Putting it about back up there where it was, that part was for executing code that will run before you press the play button, but after you hit the initialization button. So only run that part once. And the part after the while for a uh, wait for start and before the almost is active, that part will run once, one time. Uh, after you play the play button. So those are usually where the autonomous goes, where you run it one time after you hit the play button and stop once you reach the end. And down here is the part that will actually iterate through as long as the play button is, or as long as the program is running and will stop after you hit the big square that tells the program to actually stop running. So, yeah. Nope. Uh, yeah, my bad on that. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, Josh, do you have anything else to add? All right, so uh, thank you all for watching the video or attending the Zoom meeting, and um, I hope uh, you guys all have a great robotic season. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us or to any local teams or uh, on Discord in FTC Discord servers, and hope you all have a great season. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, sharing. That was really cool. I don't think we've had like a basic programming one. So hopefully this will help teams because we get questions. So I'm just going to refer them to this video now. <laughs> so um, this video will probably be up on the FTC one by Sunday night because I have to do something. Um, but yeah, feel free. I must, uh, you can find them at Wolf Corp uh, on Instagram. Yeah, you guys have Facebook too, right? And like Gmail. Yeah, uh, I think I, here, actually I'll put our links in the chat. Uh, I could probably also send it to you to put it like in the description or something like that. Uh, yeah, just send it to me and I'll put it in the description on YouTube. Okay. So it's like clickable. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for showing. Good luck. Uh, keep telling everyone to sign up for our practice scrimmages so you can get used to the control hub and uh, feel free to reach out. The best way is Discord if you have any questions. Uh, thank you guys. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.